Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Justina and here I like to make, create, and inspire fun art things with you through my DIYs. Now, as you see by the title, I have a new spring decor DIYs that only took five minutes to make and they are from thrifted or Dollar Tree items. I know I have been out for a little while, but I am back and hopefully have more content for you. I have some exciting news that I'm going to keep a secret just for a little while longer, but keep tune and make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss out on future videos. With all that being said, let's just jump right into it and let's art today. For today's first DIY, I have two of these metal decor pieces from Dollar Tree that I purchased a while back. Now, they just say decor and they do have a hanger on the back of them, which I thought would be perfect for today's DIY. Now, I wasn't so in love with the color, so I really wanted to give it a nice spring color using this aqua blue from Rust-Oleum. I gave it a nice two coats of paint just to make sure to get all in those nooks and crannies. And here how it turned out. I really love this blue for this spring this year and it really does look so awesome after giving it that nice two coats of spray paint. For the second part of this DIY, I have two of these larger wooden crates that I purchased from Dollar Tree in their crafter square section. Now, one of them I painted black a while back and here is how the natural wooden crate looks like, which is absolutely gorgeous, but I'm going to give these two crates a new coat of paint using acrylic paints. I mixed a darker gray with some white acrylic paint to get this really light gray and I really love it for the springtime. It's very neutral. I did sand down both crates off camera very lightly just so that the paint has something to adhere to. I did have to give it two coats of paint and then set it to the side to dry completely. Once they were dry completely, it was now time to assemble everything together. I'm just showing you that I really didn't paint the inside of my crate because you won't be able to see it when I'm finish anyways and I didn't want to waste the paint. Now I wanted to attach that metal decor piece to the wooden crate and the best way I found that would work for my purposes was just to use an all-purpose hot glue stick with my hot glue gun. Now I'm just trying to find the best placement of where I want to put that metal decor piece onto my crate. I really wanted it to sit a little bit higher so you see more of that decor piece in the background. Like I said, I am using an all-purpose glue stick to attach the metal piece to the wooden piece. Now if you want this for a permanent long-lasting hold, I suggest using something stronger like E6000 or a super glue, but for my purposes only, hot glue worked just fine. After everything was attached together, here's how they look. I absolutely love it and it looks so cute and I want to change this into faux planter boxes. Now I'm filling mine with some floral foam that I've used many times, but I'm still trying to use up what I have on hand and not run out and buy some new things. And I'm not gluing it down to the bottom of the crate. I'm just placing it in there because I do want to change this out in the future. After I have everything where I like it, I'm just going to add all of my florals that I want for springtime in them by placing it into the floral foam. After I placed all of my florals where I like it, the last thing I needed to do was just hang it on the wall and that completes this DIY. I absolutely loved how these two turned out. I think these will look perfectly on a back patio area or maybe in your living room. However, I am just loving the spring colors and I love that I can change it out throughout the year. I want to make over this little thrifted box that I found at the thrift store. It has these little hearts on it and it was 99 cents plus 50% off of the yellow tag. So I got this for literally cents on the dollar, which is 
really cool. I want to use the back of it as like a insert for a decor piece. So I'm just trying to remove the little tag inside and I do give it a nice sanding with some sandpaper. Another color that I'm loving for springtime is this salmon coral from my Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint. It's really vibrant after it completely dries, but I did go ahead and give it two coats using that chalk paint. Now I'm just painting the inside of the frame and the outer edges. I don't go all the way completely in the back because I am going to cover that later. Once that was completely dried, here's how it looks. Like I said, I didn't paint all the way on the back of it because we are going to cover that right now using some scrapbooking paper that I have on hand. Now, I really love crafting with a scrapbooking paper because there's so many things you can do with it. This one is a little bit textured. It is really hard to see through the camera, but I'm just cutting it down to size using my paper cutter and making sure that it fits inside. Now to attach it, I am using using my hot glue gun, just putting a lot of dollops on the edges and then I'm going to insert that back in and press down firmly. This does hold very well and since it's an all purpose hot glue stick, it is really hard to take off. The other part is using this other piece of scrapbooking paper. Now at first I thought I was going to use the whole piece of that butterfly paper, but I really wanted to give this piece some more texture by using some fake florals that I purchased from Dollar Tree a while back. I am hot gluing that inside of the box just to give it some more texture like I said and I'm hot gluing it down into place. Now, like I mentioned, I did want to use that fly free scrapbooking paper, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. However, it wasn't sitting right and it was covering my greenery in the background way too much. However, I did want to show you that I was going to place it on some foam pieces to give it a raised look, but I still didn't really like how it, it was turning out. So I did remove it and start all over again. So after I was done messing with it, I then took it off and started cutting the outer edges of the butterfly. I try to get as close as I can to the edges so that the butterfly is the main centerpiece of this little decor piece. And I absolutely loved how it turned out. While I am cutting out my butterfly, friends, if you are new here and you haven't yet subscribed, I hope you do that today. All you have to do is click on that big red subscribe button down below. It is totally free, but make sure to click on the bell notification so that YouTube can always notify you when I upload a new video. Plus, I would love for you to be part of my virtual art family. If you are already subscribed to my channel, thank you. Thank you so much. I do appreciate each and every one of you, and I hope you enjoy today's video. Now that I have my butterfly cut out, I still want it raised off of the back of the little decor piece. So I took two more of those foam pieces, cut it down to size and glued them together. I will flip over my butterfly and glue that down onto the back of the wings. Then I will place it in the center of my little decor piece. At first I thought I wanted it to be centered, but then I thought it looked really cute when I put it on a slant. Once again, I'm just using my hot glue to attach it down. After I had my butterfly attached down, I did want to add some more florals. So I have a couple of pieces of lavender floral picks from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to place it behind my little butterfly here. It's either a butterfly or a moth, but either way, it's still a gorgeous little cutout piece. I will add some more greenery, attach everything down using my hot glue gun, and that completes this DIY. Here's how my little decor piece turned out and I absolutely love it. I'm really loving this salmon coral color from my folk art home decor chalk paint. And I really love the simplicity of this DIY. I would love to know if you love it as much as I do down in the comments section below.
For my next DIY, I have one of these fake book stacks from Dollar Tree that was in their Thanksgiving section that I tried to make over before, but I didn't like how it turned out. So today I am going to give it another makeover. I'm going to take it outside and give it about two coats using this aqua blue color in this Rust-Oleum spray paint. And here's how it turned out. Now I didn't get every nook and cranny and I didn't do the back or the bottom of this box because I am going to cover it later. I didn't want it to be completely blue, so I'm going in with my Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint in the color Vintage Yellow, and I'm just going to paint in the middle stripe. I do make sure to get the edges as well. Once that was done, I did go in with my Irish green, same in the Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint, and I'm going to paint the bottom portion of this book stack using that green. Now, I did give each section two coats of paint. Once everything had time to dry, I did want to fill in the cracks between each book section using my Posca paint marker in the color gray. Now I should have one in there with a black Posca paint marker just to make the books stand out a little bit more, but I really wanted to keep this a little bit light since this is a spring decor piece. Now I wanted to give my books some titles, so I have some of these words from Dollar Tree. They are rub on transfer stickers and I just picked three that I really liked. After I cut them down to size, I'm just going to place them on my book stacks using a popsicle stick to place them on there. You do have to give it a little rub um, with the popsicle stick or you can use your nail, but either way, it does adhere really nicely down to the paint. After I was done, all I did was remove the top film from the sticker and it was nice and adhered down. I continued doing it for the rest of the two books. I did want to add some more decor to my book stack and I found this perfect blue burlap ribbon in my crafting stash that I purchased years ago that I still had on hand. I'm just going to unravel it and measure out how much I need and then cut it down to size. Now while I was measuring I knew that this was still a little bit too wide and I didn't want the whole burlap ribbon to cover all of the books so I am going to cut it down even a little bit thinner so that more of the books stand out. I'm just using a pair of scissors to cut it down to size. To attach the ribbon all I am using is my hot glue gun and making sure to press it down with a popsicle stick because it was super hot today and I'm just attaching it on the bottom end and on the back side. Now I did want this book stack to have a layered look. I love the layered look when I'm doing DIYs just like this and I have this written on paper from a, a scrapbooking paper book that I've had on hand and I'm just adding that right on top of the blue burlap. Then I have this sheen ribbon that I want to place on top of that little word ribbon that I just laid down so that you can see the words through the ribbon but gives it another layered look. Glued that down into the placement that I like and now I'm adding some more florals to the top of it. I really love this lavender that they came out with um, at Dollar Tree this year. Lastly, I wanted to add a butterfly to this book stack. I just hot glued it down into place and that completes this DIY. I really loved how this DIY turned out. It is one of my favorites in today's DIYs, but let me know what you think about this one down in the comment section below. All right, friends, that completes today's DIYs. I know it was super short and sweet, but I really wanted to show you these DIYs today. They were super easy, really fun to make, and only took minutes to do, and very affordable. A lot of these things I already had on hand, so these were really fun to make. I would love to know which one was your favorite down in the comment section below. Remember, friend, if you are new here and you haven't yet subscribed, I hope you do that today. All you have to do is click on that big red subscribe button down below, but make sure to click on the bell notification so that YouTube can always notify you when I upload a new video. Plus, I would love for you to be part of my virtual art family. If you are a ready subscriber, thank you so much. If you could take 
that time to click on that big thumbs up button. It really does help out my channel and lets me know that you enjoy today's DIYs. I do have a bunch of exciting content coming soon, but like I mentioned earlier, it is still a surprise and I will let you guys know as soon as I can. But make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss out. And thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Thank you.